Hello, in this next video I'm going to discuss the anatomy of a hip joint and focus in on the bony landmarks. Now the hip joint, let's have a look at that. The hip joint in itself medically is known as the iliofemoral joint, okay, because this is the ilium and this is a femur, so it's called the iliofemoral. The hip joint is a synovial ball and socket and the cardinal motion will be flexion and extension of the hip. It will also be able to abduct and adduct and internally and externally rotate. The hip joint distally will attach to the knee and then proximally is obviously forms part of the pelvic girdle area in here. But we'll do that in another lecture. Now in terms of the bony landmarks, then there's not really that many we can palpate. The part on the outside is known as the greater trochanter and then this is a bony prominence that provides many muscle attachments. Like you can see on this side we have got the glutei that will come down yeah, and also some of the external rotators like the, the piriformis etc. Now let's have a look at the ball. So this is the ball of the femur. This is the neck. This is the greater trochanter. And then this is a smaller area called the lesser trochanter here. So this part is where the psoas muscle or iliopsoas, so the iliacus and the psoas will come down like here and then it will attach onto the lesser trochanter. So this is the psoas major and then this is the iliacus that comes onto this bony landmark in this area in here. What you don't see on the head of the femur is where it articulates within the socket. And the socket in here will be conjoined between the pubis, the ilium and the ischium. So within here the socket is made up of three conjoined bones and naturally the head will fit in there. To form the iliofemoral joint. To deepen the socket you've got a, an extra piece if you like uh, is called the acetabular labrum and there is a rim going all the way around. So basically think about a cup and a saucer it deepens the cup for it to be more stable. The same here the labrum makes it more stable within compared say to the shoulder that's relatively unstable in comparison. From the inside part, not where you can see that, there is a ligament that is called the ligamentum teres and the word teres means round and it carries an artery. So basically there is a blood supply going to the head of the femur and again you can't see it on this one and there would be a little dip on the end here called the fovea capitis and then that's where the ligament would attach to that and then it supplies a part of the head with its blood. On this case here you can see that the fracture is present on the neck of the femur and if I did that you can see that there is a full fracture. Not very common in the younger population and a little bit more common in the older especially with females where they might have fractured the hip joint. At the back of the femur there is a ridge called the linea aspera but it's difficult to palpate so we don't need to mention too much of that one. Now, it's not really part of the hip itself, it's a little bit about the pelvis area. So there are a few more landmarks we can palpate. This would be known as the anterior superior iliac spine, where the sartorius muscle will attach. This is the anterior inferior iliac spine, where the rectus femoris attaches. And we can also palpate the pubic tubercle here. And then, for instance, the inguinal ligament would come down from the ASIS to that area. Okay, so that ligament would come from there to there. But also the rectus abdominis would attach to that. So we, are, we can palpate some landmarks which is sort of hip related. Posteriorly, we can get onto the ischial tuberosity along here, which is where the hamstrings will attach. This area is known as the posterior superior iliac spine, the PSIS, and then again that will be in line with the second tubercle on the sacrum. 
but we're not really going to discuss too much of that. There's also a way PIIS, or posterior inferior iliac spine here. And then this area, which is difficult to palpate, is known as the greater sciatic forearm end, the foramen, and the sciatic nerve will come through that. This is the top of the iliac, so known as the iliac crest. So there's not too many landmarks we can actually physically palpate when it comes to the hip. I do have a human one here where we can see the greater trochanter where I mentioned earlier. This is the very obvious lesser trochanter around here. This is the ischial tuberosity. That's actually a ligament coming across there called the sacrotuberous ligament. And then this one's the sacrospine, okay? So it's part of the pelvis rather than part of the hip joint. And then anteriorly, you can see the ASIS and then the AIS where the rectus femoris will attach. And then the inguinal or the inguinal ligament where it goes to the pubic tubercle. Okay, and then these are ligaments of the hip. That is called the iliofemoral ligament. That is one from here called the pubofemoral and then there is one at the back called the ischiofemoral. So there we have some basic anatomy of the hip joint. And thank you for watching.